पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्ण उदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमे वावशिष्य ओं शांति 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 वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चानूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु ओ एडोरेशन लॉर्ड कृष्ण द प्रिसेप्टर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ द फोर्सेस ऑफ डार्कनेस एंड बिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ इमोटैलिटी पुरुषोत्तम योग गीता चैप्टर 15 Yoga of the Supreme Self. We are coming to the conclusion of this chapter, and just to remind you, all souls are called Purusha. The essential nature of the soul is called Purusha Tama. In an allegorical way, think of so many reflected suns. in countless jars of water in every jar the reflected sun is a purusha the jar will break down the water will spill but the reflected sun essentially is the sun your jivatma the individual soul is a reflected sun and jivatma never perishes it goes through cycles of birth and death but never perishes it is in ever existing so jivatmas souls are called purushas and the essential nature of the soul that is the sun the sun is the reality behind all reflected suns the essential nature that remains untouched that essential nature is a matter of revelation realization it is not a karmic attainment any change that reflected sun makes in the jar of water that relates to karma karma based changes and in the dull stage everyone is in whole with karma pravritti sakamya all these are synonyms sakamya everything pursuing your ego's expectations but all your ego's expectations are in the realm of birth and death cycle of birth and death so the revelation that the jiva individual soul is actually the absolute self that's purushottam yoga and is the result of integral yoga again just to remind you integral yoga action emotion will and reason all these turn into karma yoga bhakti yoga dhyan yoga gyan yoga so when we say be a yogi it implies integral practice and led by integral yoga there is a revelation aham brahmasmi i am brahman 
and that's the revelation of Purushottama, the Supreme Self. Yo ma meva ma sammudho janati Purushottamam sa sarvavid bhajati maam sarvabhavena bharata. O Arjuna, the undeluded one who knows me as Purushottama, the Supreme Self, the wise one worships me with all his heart. To worship God with all your heart, Sarvabhavena, that's possible through integral movement, yoga that is not keeping your personality disintegrated, but yoga that integrates your personality, brings a form of melody in your life. And that movement brings absolute fulfillment. 20th verse, iti guhyatamam shastram idamuktam samayu imayanagha etad buddhva buddhiman syat kritikrityascha bharata. O sinless Arjuna, thus have I explained to you the scripture containing the supreme secret. Having known this, one becomes enlightened. He thereby accomplishes all that is to be accomplished by him. Attaining liberation is the fulfillment of all your cherished desires. Nothing left. Pursuing the, the desire is kind of staying with your dream and no matter how wonderful the dream it is a it's an appearance it is not a reality and in your dream not a needle point of the dream world is real and that revelation is a is supreme secret an aspirant goes through lots of confusion. Confusion. How did Nirguna Brahman become Saguna Brahman? Whom should you be devoted to? Saguna Brahman or Nirguna Brahman? All these are confusions. They are cleared up by Satsanga. What is the nature of moksha? What is karma yoga? Karma sannyasa. Karma sannyasa, though performing actions, you are not creating karma. But your actions have become means to purification of your heart. Dhyana yoga how to be successful in practice of meditation and how to practice vichar, atma and atma vivek, to separate the self from the not self. What is maya? What is avidya? All these questions they give you a, a, a kind of a confusion in the mind of aspirants. So it is not an easy task to follow the path of yoga and attain enlightenment. But all these subtle points have to be understood. And these are all secrets. Iti guhyatamam. Thus have I explained to you the scripture containing the supreme secret. 
having known this, one becomes enlightened. Gita is scripture that handles all this supreme secret. And thus we are concluding this 15th chapter. Om Tat Saditi Srimad Bhagavad Gita Supanishatsu Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastra Sri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Purushottam Yoga Nam Panchadashodhyaya Thus in the Upanishad of the Bhagavad Gita the knowledge of the Supreme Brahman the scripture of Yoga ends the 15th chapter entitled Purushottam Yoga the Yoga of the Supreme Purusha and we are entering into 16th chapter which is known as Daiv Daivasur Sampad Vibhaga Yoga chapter 16 Yoga of divine and demoniac qualities and this very profound chapter gives with great clarity what constitutes enlightenment. To be enlightened you must develop Daivi Sampat and move away from Asuri Sampat. Devi Sampat is divine wealth. Asuri Sampat is demoniac wealth. Divine virtues go to constitute Devi Sampat. And these virtues, they are the characteristics of your, your spiritual progress. Real progress lies in developing these virtuous qualities. And what are those qualities? Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Abhayam Sattva Sanshuddhi Buddhir Jnana Vyavyasya Mahasthiti Dhanam Damascha Yajnascha Swadhyaya Tapahar Javam The Blessed Lord said, fearlessness, purity of heart, steadfastness in wisdom and, and yoga, charity, control of senses, sacrifice, study of scriptures, austerity and straightforwardness, the Sanskrit terms, Abhayam, all these are like mantras. Allow your mind to be fascinated by these virtuous qualities and practice it in your daily sadhana. What are those qualities? Abhayam, do not be afraid. Afraid means you don't have faith in God. If you have profound faith, you are a reflected sun. And your real nature is the sun. So, following this path, there is no need to entertain fear. Sadhana promotes a progressive success. You suddenly don't become fearless. But as you practice your japa, your meditation, satsanga, and your sustained sadhana, inner strength begins to develop. And deep down in your heart, you do not allow pessimism, despair, 
to enter your heart. But your heart is open to welcome God, to enshrine God. And since God is being invoked, where is room for fear? Abhayam, every virtue is practiced with three S. Suppress, substitute, sublimate. When fear, fearful thoughts and begin to enter your mind, try to keep yourself busy with japa, prayer, meditation. Do not succumb to it. Try to suppress. Move away, move your attention away from fright, but direct your attention to Gita's saying, Upadrashta Numantacha Bharta Bhokta Maheshwara. God is watching over you, and that's all Upadrashta. When you begin to do your sadhana in a right way, an inspiration begins to develop in your heart. And that means Anumantha, God is patting your back. And when you begin to discover that how you are being led by God, then God becomes all in all for you. He is your bhartha. He is your support. He is your beloved. And as you advance, He is your, He is the source of your enjoyment. Who enjoys? God within you is the bhokta enjoyer not your ego. And that God you are, essentially. If you follow this, you are following the path of fearlessness. And while following the path of fearlessness, it is important to understand not to cause fear in the hearts of others. If you cause fear, terrify others, you cannot develop fearlessness. So, each virtue is a profound topic and a volume can be written on it. And we will proceed, not wait for the volume. So that's called Abhayam. Next, Sattva Shuddhi. Role of Sattva. In the beginning, the role of Sattva is limited. Think of the story of Ramayana. Vibhishana was sat Sattva, spirit of Sattva. Ravana, Rajas, and Kumbhakarana, Tamas. So in the early stage, Vibhishana was subservient to, Ra to Ravana. In your early stage of your spiritual movement, Sattva in you is subservient. It's, it's not free. Now that Sattva, same Vibhishana joins Rama. When Sattva opens the door to Bhakti, devotion to God, the moment the, the, the angle switches to devotion, now it becomes a movement to enlightenment. 
just like the moment Vibhishana became devotee of Rama, he was kicked by Ravana. And I will not go into that detail. Sattvasan Shuddhi, purity of your heart. And purer the heart, greater is devotion. Two virtues, two yogas become dominating. Bhakti and Jnana. And Bhakti and Jnana, they are two aspects of the same movement. You cannot have Jnana, all is Brahman, without your heart developing profound love for Brahman. Jnana and Bhakti go together. And Sattva Shan Shuddhi is experience of the blend of Jnana and Bhakti. Next quality, Jnana Yoga Vavasthiti. The same point is elaborated. All these virtues, they are interrelated. You develop one virtue in a profound way, all other virtues begin to develop automatically. But allow your mind to highlight all these virtuous qualities, give them their separate names and try to practice them. Jnana Yogi Vivastiti means being deeply involved in bhakti and jnana. Dhanam, next great quality is charity. Dhamma, Dana, Daya, these three Da is like mantra. Your higher self gains strength by these three virtues and which are Dhamma, controlling the mind and senses, Dana, charity, Daya, compassion. So when we say dana, the other two qualities are implied within it. The dimension of dhamma, control of mind and senses. The next great virtue is yajna. Yajna implies that practice which goes on sublimating your negative qualities, anger, hate, greed, these are like animals in old style, sacrifices, animals were sacrificed, but, but that's a crude example. The real yajna is sublimating those negative qualities, anger sublimated into love, pride into humility, lust into brahmacharya, and so forth. And every spiritual practice that purifies your heart, and sublimates animal qualities of your personality. It's called yajna. Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya is study of scriptures. <laughs> Japa. Satsanga, all are implied in swadhyaya. Swadhyaya. Swa is the self. Open the chapter of the self. Subtle meaning behind Swadhyaya. Allow your mind to study. Who am I? What is the self? 
and everything that you do is a part of swadhyaya next tapas tapas is austerity austerity implies correcting the short circuited energy within your personality anger hate greed all these are short circuited energy and when you practice austerity practice of austerity in a profound way is practice of integral yoga in daily life with perseverance and patience and the next great quality arjavam straight forwardness being straight in thought word and deed be being an open hearted personality not some somebody else in your thought in your thought thinking another way and speaking another way and acting another way then you are not a straight forward you are crooked ahimsa satyam akrodha tyagah shantir apaishunam दया भूतेश्वलोलुप्तम मार्दवम रीरचापलम नेक्स्ट सेट ओ सिंहलस अर्जुना नॉन वायलेंस ट्रुथफुलनेस एब्सेंस ऑफ एंगर रिनंसिएशन सिरिनिटी ऑफ माइंड absence of fault finding nature compassion towards all living beings non covetousness gentleness modesty and absence of fickle mindedness the sanskrit words are ahimsa घट घट में है साई रमता कटुक बचन मत बोल रे गॉड एबाइड्स इन एवरी हार्ट हार्टिंग एनी वन इज इंसल्टिंग गॉड एंड इफ यू लव गॉड देन ऑलवेज डील विद पीपुल विद गुड हार्टेडनेस बी गुड डू गुड how good there is no limit to it and hold absolutely no grudge do not send the people to hell if you send them you are sending yourself also because you have to watch over them that they are really experiencing hell when you revenge on a person that vengeance involves your mind in a very profound way so understand the power of non violence and non violence implies universal love sarva bhuti te rata be involved with doing good to all be good do good lead to the climax of this movement so that you hold no grudge in your heart no matter what circumstances no grudge against anyone but view the whole world as presence of god ghat ghat mein hai sai ram ta next satyam truth satyam eva jayate nan ritham truth alone triumphs not falsehood so allow the truth to shine and that's your goal you remember the vedic mantra 
Asato ma sadgamaya. Lead me from untruth to truth. Mrityor ma amritam gamaya. Lead me from death to immortality. Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya. Lead me from darkness to light. All that is implied by the words Satyam, Akrodho, absence of anger, is an extension of Ahimsa. Tyag, developing Tyagavritti. Tyag means not being involved with fruit of karma. If you live only for fruit of karma, it is a path of pravritti. The, in this movement, you are, abs you are absent of the quality of renunciation. Tyagi is a renunciation. Renouncing worldly goals and striving for attaining liberation. That whole movement from pravritti to nivritti, that's the movement of tyag. Shanti, another great virtue that you need to develop, is peace, harmony. You're radiating sarve bhavantu sukhina, May all be happy. In your presence, people should not become excited. You should not be causing excitement, but should be bombing, creating a bomb over the heart of others. How successful you are, that will depend. It is a progressive movement. But the more you do, greater is your worship of God. Otherwise, you are spending hours and hours doing japa. And then spending hours and hours fighting with people. So you are working against shanti. Next great quality, apai shunam. Pishun term relates to gossiping habits. And it's absence of fault finding nature. Daya bhuteshu. Compassion towards all living beings. Sarva bhutite rata. Being deeply involved in helping all living beings. There is no exception to the rule. If you do your sadhana and with the prayer, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, may all be happy. Sarve Santu Niramaya, may all be free of diseases. Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, may all be endowed with sanamati that enables every soul to realize I am Purushottama, I am Brahman. And may every soul attain liberation. So that type of heart has to develop Sarvabhuteshu. Alolupvam, absence of greed. Mardavam, Mardavam is quality of modesty. Quality of modesty, not becomes conceited, but death with humility and rear. The word hri 
relates to gentleness, modesty, they are all similar qualities. And next one, achapalam, fickle mindedness, absence of fickle mindedness. Mind should not be so uncontrolled that jumping around constantly like a monkey. All these are your goals by sadhana day by day. And let me also re recite the last set of Davi Sampat. Teja kshama dhriti shaucham adroho nati manita bhavanti sampadam devim Abhijatasya Bharata Vala Tej Tej is literally means effulgence. When you have great inspiration, your energy seems to be vibrant. Your personality as if shines. That's called Tejas. It's the awakening of faith and inner strength. Next quality, forgiveness. Kshama. But the type of forgiveness that you don't record it in your mind. How much have I forgiven someone? It's become so natural fortitude, endurance, patience, titiksha, purity, physical and mental purity, absence of animosity, and freedom from pride. The last of the list is nati manita. Freedom from pride. So these are the qualities of one who is born with a divine nature. And next time you will hear about the Asuri quality, the demoniac qualities. The divine qualities must be promoted. Demoniac qualities must be reduced and sublimated. This is the highlight of religion, of yoga, of the path that leads to liberation. No matter what religion you practice, these are the highlights. And with this I am concluding. Om. Om. Ram, 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 Om, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om. Prayer for shower of Karuna Mayra's grace of God over all of you with the blessings of Shakti, Bhakti and Mukti. The blessings are for all, all souls. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhi Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukum Vabandhanan Mrityor Mukshyama Amritat Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Nidamaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchid Dukabhag Bhavet Om Shanti Sham Shanti Hari Om Taksha